Hey everybody, it's Colin Smith here and thanks for joining me this week. We're going to be looking at details and photos. Now the photo we're going to be using I shot with some interesting lenses. I've actually got a set here of these uh, Rockinon cinema lenses. They're actually quite inexpensive and they're really designed for shooting video. So they're fixed uh, prime lenses. Now I do use these mostly for uh, video work, but they're a lot of fun to play around with for photography. And you can see here, we've got a really different kind of a look. And this is directly out of the camera. Now you can see the kind of vignetting around the edges. And that's because I had to stack a couple of ND filters because I wanted to kind of slow down the shutter speed here uh, late in the afternoon. All right, so let's have a look at working on this photograph. So the first thing we want to do is we want to crop this. So we're going to grab the crop tool. All right, so if we hold down the shift key and just click from the edge, we can just kind of pull out that vignette so it's not uh, getting in the way of the photo anymore. And then if we go around the edge here, I just want to drag this because I'm trying to fix the horizon there because it wasn't quite level. Now there's a little bit of barreling there. I could go down under lens correction here and start to play around with the settings, such as the distortion to fix that. But I'm actually going to kind of leave it because in a way it's kind of the charm of using this different kind of a lens. I, I kind of, in a way I kind of like that. It's kind of fun. So I'm just going to hit the enter key now to apply that. And then we're going to go in and we're going to start working right now with the details. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at a couple of things. We're going to be dodging and burning, but we're going to dodge and burn with light. And we're also going to do with details. Now, I'm using a, um, a Wacom tablet here. I've got an Intuos Pro Medium that I'm going to be using, and so I have pan pressure. Um, so you're going to be seeing in a second, I'm going to be showing you some of the pan pressure settings. Now, if you don't have one of those and you're just using a mouse or a trackpad, that's fine to just uh, stick to a low setting and just slowly build it up. And we'll talk at that as we're going. So my particular strategy for doing dodging and burning is not to go in and do all the main adjustments first. I actually like to start with the dodging and burning and then I'll make all my global adjustments after that. And the reason I'm going to do that is because it tends to blend them in a little bit more and it lets them move with the other adjustments that I'm doing. And it just makes them look more natural. Whereas if you do everything and you get it perfect, then you add your dodging and burning. I feel like sometimes you're diminishing some of the detail and also it feels like a little bit like you just kind of added this afterwards or at least that's my personal philosophy so let's jump in here so we've got this beautiful moody day and i just really want to just kind of enhance it we're going to be enhancing the details and really making this look more three-dimensional and making it pop so why don't we just go up to the top here and we're going to start by going into the local settings and we're going to start on an adjustment layer and I'm going to double click and I'm going to call this one dodge. We're going to click on the mask and I'm going to invert the mask and this way I can see what I'm doing here. So I want to make it brighter so we're going to take the exposure we're going to push it up a little bit. I'm going to slightly recover the, the highlights just so that this doesn't have too much of a blowing out effect on everything. I'm going to slightly open up the midtones, push up the whites just a little bit. And I think that's going to be pretty good. Now, one of the things I like to do sometimes, too, is touch on the temperature and just slightly warm it. And this way it makes it look like the sun is actually hitting it. So it adds a little bit of a cinematic feel to it. And the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to collapse that. And I'm going to add another layer and I'm going to call this one burn. All right. So what I need to do is hide the dodge layer for a second while I'm working on this burn layer. Okay, with the burn, we need to make sure we open the mask and invert that so we can see exactly what's happening. And now what we want to do with this is we're going to go the other way. We're going to darken this down a little bit. I'm going to reduce the contrast ever so much. Drop the midtones down, maybe slightly drop these shadows down and give it some blacks. Definitely want some blacks in here. All right, and now what I'm gonna do for this one is I'm gonna to touch on the temperature. I'm just gonna ever so slightly cool it. So these areas in shadow 
that are not getting the direct sunlight are going to have a little bit of a cooler kind of a feel to them. So I'm just going to hide this and now we're going to turn it off. So what I want to do now is I want to paint these in selectively. So we're going to start with the burning. So why don't we go here with the burning, we're going to turn it on. We're going to invert the mask and that hides the effect of it. See that? You can't see anything happening right, right now. And now we're going to go down and we're going to grab our local settings. And under here we're going to make sure we use our brush and we're going to choose paint in. Now this is where the pressure sensitivity gets in. We click on here. The pressure adjusts the size of the opacity. I want the pressure to adjust the opacity. And let me show you what that means. I'll make this brush a little bigger. And if I'm pushing gently, you can see that. If I push harder, you can see that. And I push as hard as I can. See how that's going to build up over time just by using the pen. So the harder I push on the pen, the stronger the effect is going to be. And that enables me to shade it, kind of like you would with a pencil. Now, if you don't have one, you can always just drop your opacity down here to a lower number. I'm going to do those. I'm actually going to drop this down for now. Some of the preliminary stuff I like to do is I'm going to drop it down to about 20. And I'm making this brush quite large. And just very gently, I'm just going to kind of darken the sky up a little bit. So what I'm doing is I'm not doing the details yet. I'm just doing compositional dodging and burning right now, just to kind of big picture stuff to lead the eye in a certain place. So I just want to darken that sky down more at the top. So I'm almost painting in a vignette by hand. Great. And also in the foreground, I'm just going to darken that down just a little bit and push it a little bit on the left. And just in here, I'm just going to kind of darken that just a little bit. All right. Now I'm going to drop it down and we're going to do the detail work. So I'm looking for the shadow areas and I'm just going to go around these areas. Remember the light would be coming from this side here, traveling from the left to the right. All right. So I'm just painting these shadows into the areas, not even touching the areas, but I'm just looking at the areas that are going to be casting shadow right now. So you just want to, anything that's protruding, I'm just kind of dropping the shadow down behind it a little bit. All right, let's see what we've done so far. If we look at it before and after, see how it's just starting to tighten in the composition. Now I'm going to go into the areas themselves and just start to shape these. Now notice I'm only using a 20% opacity, so I really don't need a high opacity. Then what this does by going in here, it just really kind of separates things and adds a little bit of depth. Now you're really going to see how this comes alive when we add the next part, which is when we add the dodging. This is just kind of setting a base for everything. But what I'm doing, see how I'm separating these different areas? And it's just subtle right now. But if you look at this area here, and I show you before and after, see how when you look at it accumulatively, it starts to build up. So you just want to be patient and just take your time just kind of building. And see here, I can separate these two by just going in there. And essentially, that's what I like to do. Now, I'm not going to go like too crazy with this because, you know, just for the sake of time. All right, so this is what we're getting with the burning. Now watch what happens when we do the dodging. This is really going to come alive. So under dodging, we want to make sure we invert our mask back. So it's hiding everything. And now we're going to start to paint. So why don't I just go across here and create a bigger brush right now? Because I want a light just kind of sweeping down here. So I'm not going to go too hard, but I'm just going to gently let that light come in. Once again, this is the big move, the compositional move. And this sets the feeling. This has got a lot to do with the storytelling here. Because the story we're telling is this moody day at the beach where we've got this light just kind of coming in here into this bay. And this is super low tide here at Victoria Beach. And it's starting to reveal some of these areas that would normally be underwater. So there's a little bit of mystery going on here. 
All right, and also the horizon, I'm just gonna just give that a little touch. Nice, now you'll see this, if I go before and after, you can see it's subtle, but it really does make a big difference. All right, so now we're gonna think about where's the light hitting these? Okay, so here, watch this. This is, now we've got sunlight hitting there. Isn't that beautiful? It just makes things pop. Just, this is where things just come three-dimensional at this point. And you can go very natural or, you know, if you want, you know, if you go for a larger brush, you're going to get more of a painterly feel. So it's kind of up to you, you know, what kind of a feel you want to get out of this. But, you know, when you see those photos and they have like this kind of dreamy look to them. And that kind of magical, like the light is just perfect. Well, this is how it's done with dodging and burning. I've been using this technique on my images for quite a long time. Now, if you go over like I just did there, just change the brush from paint in to paint out. And you can just fix those edges. See that? There. And I'm just going to go back to paint in. Let's add some up here. And one of the things I love about this particular technique too is it's therapeutic. It really makes you feel like, you know, now you're becoming an artist and you're really getting to craft your photograph. So it's not just something you did in camera with a little post. Now you get to craft this image and make it exactly what you want. You can tell your story and just maybe a little bit of lights just hitting in here. Even though it's not, you can make it look like it is. See that? And uh, maybe just, I'm going to kiss the top of these rocks with a little bit of sun. And maybe this house is getting a little bit more. There we go. All right, so let's have a look and see what we've got here. Before and after. Now I'm going to get a little bit bigger and I just want to kind of go a little bit in here and just, that'll throw it back a little bit, give it a bit of a haze effect. And I'm just going to blend that in. Nice thing about using pressure sensitivity. See how I can just blend these things in. There we go. And I just want to blend that in a little bit better. And now see how that just kind of throws that back. And it adds a little bit of atmospheric perspective. So all I've done so far right now is just a little bit of dodging and burning. And we can see what a difference this has made to the image. Let's have a look at it right now. Let's look at it before and after. Look at that. You can see a lot has happened just by the dodging and burning. Now we can go into a develop and let's do some overall adjustment. And now it's going to move everything with our dodging and burning. So I'm going to recover my highlights a little bit. Maybe tap the exposure just a little bit. If we want to give this some nice blacks, Let's push that down, add a little more mystery. And we can punch the whites if we want. I don't think I want to punch the whites though. Let's pull those back down. Maybe play around with the mid-tones a little bit. And one of the things I like to do too is maybe give this one a little bit of warmth. Let's see how that looks. You know, if we warm that up, how does that look compared to cooling it down? See how it's completely different? We cool it down, we warm it. Completely different story. You know what? I'm actually going to go slightly into the cools because I like that kind of feel there where it's a little bit cooler because then it gives it the feeling that it's not so warm and hot, but yet these beautiful warming rays are just kind of coming in there. Now, there's other things we could do to this. In fact, why don't we have a look if we want to go under an effect and we're going to add a filter. Then we're going to go down to the Tone Enhancer. Now we want to just kind of make these foreground elements pop a little bit more. So let's just kind of play around with those. What I'm really looking for is to give it a bit more detail and clarity. Be careful not to get too far with this. But I'm going to push it just a little higher because I am using pressure sensitive uh, pen. And I want to recover these highlights a little bit. And open up the shadows. But I do want those whites to pop too. 
All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to click on the mask and we're going to invert it so it completely hides it. And now we're going to paint it in here with the opacity. Maybe we turn the opacity up to about 40. And now make sure our pressure sensitivity is turned on. Pressure adjusts opacity, not size. There we go. And what I want to do now is just gently paint this in a little bit. See, it's making these areas pop. So it's going to further separate these from the background. So I'm just going to touch the top of that, just barely. There, I want these rocks to pop a little bit more. And because I'm painting with 50% opacity, this effect is not as strong as it was when I applied it. So that's why I went a little heavy handed when I created it and then masked it out. And then we're just kind of putting it on those areas here. So if we have a look and see what we've done there, see what it does is it just adds a little bit more pop to these elements and it just makes them kind of come out a little bit more. Okay, we're looking pretty good. Maybe one last thing I'd like to do to this is maybe we're going to add a vignette. Okay, so we're going to go down with the vignette and I'm just going to drop it down a little bit so we can see a little bit what's going on around the edges there. But we don't want to be using normal. We want to go to soft and then what that does is it preserves the colors a little bit more. See, this is normal. Let me push it all the way down so you can see. There's subtle, which is nice. There's soft, see how it keeps the blues in the sky, keeps some of the colors in here, lets the highlights come through, and then priority. So I'm gonna keep it on soft, and I don't want that to be so much. I'm just gonna give it a little touch to about there. Let's play around with that size, and I think that's looking pretty good. So there we go, in this video, I kind of gave you a little bit of a look at my approach to making the details pop on a photograph. I think it's really important to spend time on the details and it gives you more of a crafted image versus just a flat image straight out of camera. So if we look at this before and then after, you can see we've changed it substantially. But one of the things you noticed I didn't do is I didn't get too heavy with recovering highlights and opening up shadows and pushing it too far that way um, because I tend to, you know, when things look a little too grungy, they don't look so real. I mean, this, this doesn't necessarily look real. It looks a little bit more surreal, but I'm trying to avoid that typical grungy over-processed look. So you want to kind of do it with the details and make those details pop. And uh, anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this, and uh, I look forward to seeing you once again next week.